So how did you get to know about this <clears throat> opportunity? Where did you hear it from? Uh, actually, I got to know about it in the Code IST group, the WhatsApp group. There was one message. I guess Karnav sent that one. And there I uh, like came to know, know about it. And then I applied for it. So, so yeah. I'm so glad our messages are helpful. Yeah, thanks, Arnab. So uh, another question that people were curious about is, why did you apply for this scholarship? What did you think of gaining when you applied? Uh, actually, uh, I was more interested in, uh, like, uh, I wanted to connect with uh, all the Googlers, like, which I am able to do right now. Uh, I wanted to get mentorship from them, like uh, the like uh, what to say, like uh, the, we got to know more about how they work, how the work culture is in uh, Google. Also, there was one uh, virtual retreat, so I was very excited about that retreat thing because that was the main, uh, that was my main motivation be behind applying for the scholarship. Like, uh, and also we got to attend some mock interviews, so. We got to know how the real interviews with Google is, so it's it's nice. So that was my mo main motivation behind the plan. The scholarship. So, um, could you tell us about the application process? Um, Videos would like to know how to apply next year. Uh, yeah. So uh, first process, like in the first step, there are uh, three rounds. First round is application round. There you have to submit your two essay questions, like the two essay questions would be there. You have to answer them within uh, four, 400 words or something like that. And you have to submit it uh, with your you know, student transcript and resume and uh, some, some information of, uh, about your like, college and yourself. And after applying, like uh, almost everyone gets the chance for appearing for online assessment round. So after you uh, appear for the online assessment round, your online, like how you perform in that round and how you uh, wrote your essays, both would be like evaluated together. And you will, like if you make it, then you will uh, hear back from them. And uh, was there some interview round? Yeah, after uh, that online assessment round, those who performed well, they uh, uh, they had to appear for one interview round. But it was like, uh, it, it didn't have much importance, to be honest, because uh, like everyone got selected in the interview round. It was just, uh, it was not actually a proper interview. A conversation with the Googler, like they they wanted to know us better, so that that's it. So, what do you think was the defining uh, factor in the application? What do you think is the most important part? Because you just said the interview is not really the screening process. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, basically, uh, first thing is your passion for computer science. And uh, your like your passion for for increasing involvement of women in computer science, you how you demonstrate your leadership skills. I think these three are the main factors in the selection process. So, we had a question on the form, and this is this question asks, how did you manage the preparation for the scholarship with college and how should people prepare for it? Uh, honestly, I didn't take much preparation for it. So <laughs> firstly, what I did, I connected with uh, like previous years, fellows, uh, good scholars, I connected with them and I asked for their advice, like how to answer those essays, like what should we show them? like? How should we answer those essays? So, like, I sent one email to one uh, ex scholar of Google, and she just guided me. I uh, made one draft and I showed her. So she gave me some advice. Uh, so I just tried to modify the, those uh, essays, 
and after that uh, after that application process like everyone got the online assessment uh, link so in that round uh, i will say five things are more like most important uh, you should uh, take care that you have clear concept about these five things like stacks queues strings recursion and uh, uh, trees these five topics you need to have clear about uh, clear idea about these things then it's it's easy actually it's not that difficult and uh, what would you say stood out in your application what part do you think was what made them select you um, actually uh, in in my application uh, first thing you need to take care of like you need to be honest with your like with whatever you write in your essays like they already know we are in our sophomore year or in our freshman year we won't achieve much so just being honest is uh, something very important and uh, other things are like i uh, the first question was related with leadership so i just uh, wrote about things where i like wrote about events uh, i took uh, i took part in a few hackathons and as a leader and also in my school life where whenever i took part like took part in any event or anything and i showed demonstrated my leadership skills i wrote about them in the first essay in the second essay you you have to write about all the challenges that women face in computer science in technology in general and how what do you think the solutions are to that to those challenges so i just wrote what i actually think i uh, just uh, i i connected to the uh, like past scholars uh, for their uh, what they think uh, like my essay is uh, like uh, it, it, is it good or not so i asked about the uh, like if i can show what i uh, like they want to see in the in the essay so that's it so it seems like the essays were the most important part of the application process uh, essays along with that online assessment round okay so i uh, could you tell us about everyone um is parnavrita yes yeah, i think it's on her side okay uh, parnavrita i think you can drop your camera because there is some okay. yes. so uh should i rejoin if you can, you can rejoin but if it helps your network you can also switch off your camera I, i'll also switch off my camera if it um could you please repeat what you were saying yeah. um so i was saying like uh, i think uh, this year uh, along with the uh, essay round like your essays uh, all the like uh, the online assessment round was uh, something uh, which decided who who gets selected who's not because this year the acceptance rate got very low uh, this like many people applied for the, for the scholarship this year like they were overwhelmed with the number of applications they received that's what they told us in the virtual retreat and um also could you tell us a little more about the interview experience uh, how was it uh, actually the interview depends on the resume and all the essay answers that the candidate writes for me it was uh, more like uh, in, uh, uh, more like a technical interview we started with like a project i i made i a project i made during one hackathon that was a google chrome extension project google chrome extension uh, uh, development so he asked me about that project i uh, so 
after that there were a few technical questions like few things i had in my technical proficiency uh, uh, division of my uh, resume so he asked few questions about that like few coding questions Um, that's great. And you said it was more like a conversation. Yeah, it's more like a conversation. Like if you are not able to come up with an uh, answer, like the, that's not gonna make any effect on on the like on your selection process. So it's not like a viva or an exam. No, no, no. It's like right. more like one casual conversation. And the interviewers were friendly. Yeah, very friendly. He actually took two minutes to make me comfortable with him. Then he started with the questions. That's great. Um, you mentioned there's a virtual retreat. Could you tell us more about it? What did you have? What was the experience like? Uh, it was amazing, first of all. Uh, so there were a few live coding sessions and uh, we got to meet Googlers there, like the, all the like few Googlers from this uh, attack area. Uh, so we made the very first female director of this region uh, in Google, and we just had a conversation with her. Then we had some uh, coding session, as I mentioned, where we solved Google code jump uh, code jump questions like. The Googlers said how they would approach those problems and how they would solve those problems, how to write clean codes and all. And then we made uh, Googlers, different Googlers, like they are working on different projects. Like uh, someone was working with Google Pay, someone was working with uh, Google Assistants, and uh, someone was working with Google Cloud. So it was very nice to hear about their experiences, how the work culture is in Google and uh, how they made it to Google, how, how was their interview experiences, all these things. And I also heard that you had mock interview sessions. Yeah, we had mock interview sessions. So we, uh, uh, that was like a real interview. Uh, the interviewer first took our interview, like uh, we first had our interview, then we had one feedback session, like how we performed on that interview. Uh, so there were two questions in that mock interview, uh, if I remember correctly, yeah. Two questions, one was from dynamic programming, one was, uh, uh, a greedy problem. So, yeah, that's that's it. So, um, we actually. Oh, it's actually you missed our interview prep session, right? I was going to ask if. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. To prepare for this. Yeah, yeah I actually had uh, one event uh, that mm -hmm. time, and I missed that one. It's great you actually got to do this with Google. I mean, you missed that session, but you still got another chance. That's great. And how's the community? How is it um, networking with these people? Yeah, that is the most amazing thing I will say because it's so easy to ask one question there. Like there's, there's people who are just amazing and they just, uh, immediately come up with some answer so it's it's really nice like you can ask anything there and we also have two mentors uh, and we can just ask any question about google anytime in the group and they will come up with answer within you know 48 hours or something like that so it's nice So apart from technical sessions, you had mock interviews, you had coding rounds. Uh, were there any fun sessions for you guys? Yeah, there were many fun sessions actually. Uh, the most memorable one was taken by a professor who is also a game developer. And recently he joined Google. 
So he was talking about imposter syndromes and how to just tackle it, how to fight with, uh, like fight with it. So it was the most like outside all those uh, technical things. I think that one was the most uh, most memorable thing, at least for me. Also, there were uh, like few other other fun events, but that one I just uh, I will just remember forever. I think. That actually sounds so much fun. And what was your main takeaway from this entire experience? Not just the virtual retreat, but application, getting selected, um, the interview process, virtual retreat, connecting with everyone. What was your main takeaway from this? I'm sure you learned a lot. Um, the, like, uh, I, I, the main takeaway, I would say, like learning coding from the engineers of Google and learning to know, like uh, learning about uh, the uh, Google Cloud platform. Like I am interested in, uh, my area of interest lies in machine learning. So I learned a lot about machine learning in those virtual, like where I can work in future. What is my, like, what, what is the perfect uh, area for me? Uh, though I am interested in machine learning, there are many, many scopes for that also. So in those sessions, I, I think I got to know what I actually want to do. And that's really helpful. That's great. Um, do you have any advice for the juniors? Uh, for juniors, as I said, like prepare uh, five things very uh, like take care you you make uh, like you uh, know everything about all those uh, five topics as i said strings uh, stacks queues trees and recursion most of the questions in the online assessment round would be from those five topics and also there would be some gca round uh, like gca uh, part in that online assessment uh, so you just make sure sure you understand uh, uh, like you understand how to analyze a problem and how to approach a problem also make sure you understand how to solve problems with pseudocodes and regarding that AC round uh, you can connect to past scholars and you can ask for their advice and be honest with whatever you are writing in your ACs. Um, also this personal question I'm really um, interested to ask. What plans next? Do you have anything lined up or anything you're looking forward to in your personal career? Um, uh, first of all, I am just like, I am just like a beginner in this world. Like I didn't have computer science in my, uh, like in plus one plus two. So. It's like I am experiencing new things every day. I'm learning new things. So first of all, I uh, want to just make sure like uh, I do whatever I really want to do. So my area of interest, as I said, my area of interest lies in machine learning. So maybe I would go for something which is related to data analysis, machine learning in future. But you never know. like. Maybe tomorrow I'll find interest in something else and I'll go for that that particular thing. Yeah, that's so relatable. You never know. Huh. But whatever you do, I'm sure you'll do great. We have so some great. <laughs> we have some audience questions. So I'm going through those right now. One was how did you manage college studies and extracurricular studies simultaneously? So you mentioned that you'd taken part in hackathons and events. So how did you accommodate those along with studies? I know you're very good at academics. Your record is excellent. So how did you manage that? Uh, actually, I took part in hackathons. Uh, all those hackathons took place in weekends, I remember. Uh, so in each of the hackathons, I uh, I like I used to team up with uh, people from different countries, people with different tastes. That 
so i used to learn a lot from those hackathons and uh, regarding uh, that uh, data structure and algorithm part uh, we had that in our in our sort of like uh, academic course so along with that i uh, like solved problems in code support courses and uh, uh, leap code so yeah that that's it nothing much Right. There's a related question to that. Was any particular resources you followed for practicing the DSA topics? Um, so that would be okay. code forces and leap code. Uh, I think that would be leap code. Like uh, if you learn, uh, like if you want to learn a lot about data structures, if you want to know how they work, then I think you should go for geeks for geeks and leap code and uh, all the code chef code forces. Those are like. that will enhance your problem solving or problem analysis like how do you analyze your problem like any problem you face so that is for problem analysis part uh, problem solving part and if you want to like uh, make yourself good in data structure if you want to master data structure and algorithms then read code and geeks for geeks i would say You are also interested in machine learning. That's the field you are inclined towards. So, mm -hmm. how did you decide how to divide your time between machine learning and practicing DSA? Um, it's like if I give three, like if I invest three hours for solving some. Uh, like data structure problem then i would invest two hours for machine learning like to uh, make a model to train a model it's like uh, that also i i uh, i am active in that kaggle platform that's a great place to learn uh, learn about machine learning uh, you would have e like competitions very often so you can just take part and you can enhance your machine learning skills there was a uh, practicing dsa a conscious decision for interviews and applications actually it was not uh, we had data structures and algorithms in our academics so it's like i liked it so i just practiced it i wanted i, I don't, didn't think about the scholarship and uh, practice uh, so so it was like i did it because i liked it that's not a concern that's how it yeah. should be and uh, finally one last question is how did you connect with the past scholars a really good question because a lot of the first years i think would be a little scared to reach out and connect with people so do you have any advice for them uh, i actually found one article in in the internet in medium.com i guess I found one article there, and I got uh, her email ID there, and I just mailed her. I don't know how did I get that courage, but I I mailed her, and she was uh, very helpful. Like she was very nice to me, and it's not that difficult. Eh? Like you you have to reach out people, you have to ask for help. Like if you want to get help. Well, wow. also uh, you can connect in LinkedIn. That's mm -hmm. a great place. Well, um, that brings us to the end of all the questions, and I think I think we learned a lot today. It was um, really great talking to you, Pornobita. I really loved hearing about your experiences, and I'm so glad you had a great time. I'm so glad you had fun. and i'm so glad you learned so much Thank so, you so much. finally if people have questions you might want to unmute or type on the chat maybe you're not comfortable with the form um feel free to do that right now okay what are five topics important for coding so uh these are the five porno brita had mentioned i think they might have missed it out could you repeat once uh i am not i was not saying about coding in general like 
I was uh, talking about that online assessment round. The things you need to master is like uh, strings. Yeah, or no group them, I think. String stacks, queues, and trees recursion. Yeah. Also, uh, the swags you received were so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the swags people received from Google. Actually, really cool. actually, we didn't think that we would receive that cool, like that, that goes, yeah. like those many cool things, uh, because the we heard uh, we heard up uh, like about the swags uh, from past year scholars, and they didn't give this idea about. Actually, I think thanks to you guys, we interns are also going to get that same box. <laughs> I don't know what happened. They just decided to add on. Prerna has a question. Are only CS allowed for the scholarship? Metallurgy. Uh, no. Metallurgy, uh, I think metallurgy is not. Like there were people uh, from electrical engineering department. There were people from ECE, ETC. But I didn't meet anyone from metallurgy department. So I. Though it's not clearly mentioned, so you you can give it a try. But the thing is, your field should be related to computer science. I don't think. So what if someone is really good at coding, but they're from civil department or something, uh, civil engineering, then does that reduce their chances? Uh, if you are good at coding, you can give it a try. Like uh, they always say, they don't care about departments or uh, like GPA much. They always care about coding things. Like, hmm. Yeah. Uh, you just apply for it. Go for it. Like, yeah. If you can demonstrate your skills, they will. Like you have chances. Yeah. What's the worst that can happen? Rejection. We all got rejected. <laughs> yeah. uh, Parnavrita, had you applied last year? No, this was my first time because last year I didn't know about the scholarship program. And thanks to Arnav, like he sent the missing. Thanks, Arnav, and thanks, Kodaist. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Kodaist. I applied last year and this year. I got rejected both times. It's fine. You just get rejected, nothing else. <laughs> Nothing worse that can happen. Did you like? Did you got the chance to appear before online? Yeah, yeah, both this times. Year. I just said um, they give that link to almost everyone. The online assessment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both times, but never got through to the interview round. Yeah, yeah, please keep sharing. <laughs> you guys are great. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so I believe there are no more questions. So we can end this right now. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, thank you, Pornobrita, for your time. And uh, thank you. Thank you to everyone. Thanks to our Koda ST team for accommodating our video recorder, Abhiru Arnav, who's here for support. So we'll end it right now. I'll stay on for two more minutes in case people have anything to ask or anything to say. But you may start leaving now. Thanks. Maybe I have a question. Uh, yeah, sure. Since, uh, since this is online mode, and Code ISP has been very helpful to get uh, like for all the knowledge, but like uh, uh, I'm new to all this coding and stuff. But it sometimes get difficult to uh, sort out things because there's so much data on the internet that you don't understand that what is exactly that I should do that will help me to like move forward in the direction I want. 
like if I uh, it have to do a lot of research. So how can I like uh, understand what websites are good for me, what courses or what uh, what apps I should use so that it could help me? And that is one problem I am facing right now. Very valid problem. When I was in first year, I faced the same thing. But I think this is a problem you are more likely to face when you are new to these things, because once you are you've been doing this for two or three years you get you know where to search you know what is reliable mm-hmm. and what is not you know which code on stack overflow looks like it might not have a bug in it you get the feeling but arnab is much more experienced in this so arnab would you like to take this question yeah i mean uh, i think she's uh, probably talking about resources in general uh, is that what you're asking or specific to like you know bugs and fixes and all the stuff you no know, like the resources uh, because uh, you have to figure out that yeah this is thing this is what i want to learn and this mm-hmm. particular thing is giving me the same thing uh, that yeah so yeah yeah that is important yeah as sanjana said it's uh, super relatable but uh, what you can always do is just ask the seniors what they have used and uh, that's it They're like you don't have to see there are uh, with this internet being free and everyone is putting something out there so there are thousands of uh, resources out there and you don't have to find the best one you just have to find which is good for you and supports your understanding and just follow that i think that will work like that's it and uh, yeah like for whichever domain you're there i think there are like a uh, couple of uh, resources we usually put in the discord i know for dsa we always say uh, go for if it's competitive coding then go for code forces or code chef these are just two of them if it's specifically for data structures and algorithm go for lead code or gfg just two if you want to get into web development and stuff uh, free code camp is there and udemy some of the udemy courses again just two of them and same for android development for ml i think sanjana and uh, gorav do share a lot of resources So you can just ask which the seniors which resources work for them, and just go with that. Eventually, we'll find out which ones you know uh, resonate with you, which kind of resources, whether it's video video tutorials or documentations, and you will figure it out yourself. But just keep doing it. That's it. At the end line, just don't stop and don't give up. Yeah, don't give up. But also, I think it's known. I think it's no, normal to get overwhelmed. I also got overwhelmed when when I started, so it's okay. Like keep trying. And also for like specific domains like machine learning, I, I don't know why some people have this idea that you have to be good at it by second or third year. People spend their whole lives doing these things, so you have the time. There's no rush. Just keep improving. <laughs> doing the best you can you get there i heard actually you need at least 5 years to master something so our degree is like you spend 4 years here so you will have time after this so this is i've seen people start new things at the age of 35 40 50 even later and they're doing great and they're having a good time so there's no deadline and nothing like that the person i was talking about who is uh, like who was a professor and a game developer and now he's working in google so he was like 55 years old and he joined one year back so <laughs> we are much younger Oh, Whoa, what just happened? Um, what happened? Okay, there was a dead silence. That's why. Oh no no. no. So I'll leave the meeting now.
if anyone has any more questions, you can feel free to reach out. We're on Telegram, we're on Discord, we're on WhatsApp, we're, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. We're everywhere. So just reach out if you have anything to ask, anything to Stephen has a feedback form. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.